Hi everyone, it's Benitez here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm going to share with you all how you can send an email using a Q. For the agenda, I'm going to quickly talk about my last two WTF episodes, followed by the use case, and we're going to jump straight into the demo. In my last two WTF episodes, I shared with you all how you can send an email using an email template that you've defined in CDS or in Dynamics 365. In both use cases, I was using a user account as the sender. This time round, I'm going to share with you all how you can send it from a queue. So a queue is really great when you want to send from a generic email address such as a no reply. And this is typically used in customer service centers. So this is what I'll go through today. So in my use case, it's going to be the same use case that you saw in my WTF episode 21, where I was sending to a single recipient using an email template. And this is where an email template is um, associated to an email that is sent every time a new case is created so that the customer knows that their case uh, has been acknowledged by the organization. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the demo. For step number one, you want to create a shared mailbox. So head over to your Microsoft 365 admin center and expand groups and select the option called shared mailboxes. In here is where you can create a new shared mailbox by providing an email address. I will provide the official docs.microsoft.com article on how to create your new shared mailbox in my blog post. So make sure you go ahead and check it out. Step number two is to enable the email settings for your environment. Head over to the Power Platform Admin Center and in your environment that you're gonna be configuring the queue in, select the settings. And over on the right hand side, you wanna expand the email settings and click on email settings. Now, there's gonna be a bunch of settings that will be presented to you. And the one that you do wanna update is outgoing email. By default, this will be set to none. You want to update it to server-side synchronization. Okay, so step number three is to create your queue. This is the official docs.microsoft.com article. There is another Microsoft MVP in our community, Megan Walker, who I'm so pleased to also say that she's a good friend of mine. She has written a blog post on how to use queues in classic workflows, which is still relevant to today. So go ahead and check that out. If you haven't subscribed to her blog site or her YouTube channel, make sure you do that while you're there. Okay, so basically what you want to do is go back to your Power Platform Admin Center, head over to Settings, Expand Business, and select Queues. This will then open up a new browser tab where you're going to be presented with all of your queues in your CDS or in your Dynamics 365 instance, and you want to go ahead and create a new queue record. So here's one that I have created. And I've set the queue to be uh, public. You can also set it to be private as well. And I've also entered the same email address as the shared mailbox that I've set up in my Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Okay, so the next step that you need to configure is enable the mailbox profile for this queue in your CDS or Dynamics 365 instance. So select the open mailbox command and the setting that you want to update in this record is the outgoing email set it to server side synchronization as well and double check that the email address matches the email address of the shared mailbox before you exit out of this record there are two more things that you need to complete the first one is approve the email and then click on test and enable mailbox so once you've done that head over to your Power Platform Admin Center again and expand email settings and select mailboxes. If your test has successfully been um, executed, then you should see a test run status of success. And for your outgoing email, it should display as success as well. Now, before you go and give yourself a high five for setting this up, you need to make sure that you perform a test outgoing email. So head over to your model driven app and create a new email. This is so that we can confirm hand on heart that outgoing emails from a queue will actually send. 
So in your new email record, you want to clear the from field because by default, this will use you as the sender. And if you click on the lookup, you can select the option up here called queues, and then you can go and select the queue that you created, or you can type it in as well. Give it a subject, give it a test, um, like email message content, hit send, and if it successfully sends, then you're all good. Okay, so that was all the configuration steps in terms of the shared mailbox, um, the email settings, the queue, enabling the mailbox profile for the queue, and performing your test email send. So let's now jump straight into Power Automate, and I'll walk you through my flow. So this flow is pretty much the same flow that you saw in episode number 21 where I was sending an email template to a single recipient. So the trigger is exactly the same. It will be when a case record is created. And my next action that I'm using is a CDS list records action to retrieve queues. But I'm applying a filter query where I only want to grab the queue where the name equals no reply. And because I'm only ever going to get one record, I've also decided to use top count as one. So in my filter query, I'm using the name of the queue because from experience, not always, well, customers that I've worked with where, you know, I've come there post implementation, the queue from the dev environment has not been migrated into UAT or production. So if I were to use a queue ID, this flow will fail when I import it into the target environment of UAT or production because the ID of the queue in dev does not exist in the UAT instance or the production instance or any other target instance outside of the dev environment. And so one way to safeguard that is actually use the name of the queue because what I found is that the name of the queue is always consistent across all environments. So that's just my take on why I'm using the name of the queue. If the name of the queue is not consistent for you, then you may need to apply some additional parameters in your query. But for the purpose of this WTF episode, I am using the name of the queue. Okay, the next action that I'm doing is a compose action. And I've clearly labeled it as temporary because of right now, there is a known issue for some entities. When you use a CDS list records action, you will receive a status response of 200 rather than seeing the full JSON response. So this is my hack to confirm that the correct queue record has been retrieved. So I'm actually validating um, the JSON that is visible in this compose action. If I were to deploy this uh, to a target instance such as uh, production, so the live environment, I would actually remove this action. This is only in here as a way of me to validate that the correct queue record has been retrieved. Okay, and now in my final CDS action, I am using the same technique where I'm using the action of send template and I'm referencing the particular email template that I want to apply in this email that will get sent out. And in here, my sender at this time is the queues entity. And my expression, I am referencing the QID from the CDS list records action where it's correctly retrieved that Q where the name equals no reply. Um, this expression is applied because if I don't make a reference to that first row in the array, the apply to each will appear. I do have another WTF episode number 20, which you can refer to where I do talk about what you can do to avoid the apply to each appearing. So this expression that you're seeing on screen is to not only reference the QID from the CDS list records action, but it's also to avoid that apply to each from appearing. Okay, and then the final two fields that you see in here are standard where I'm just referencing the case so that I can associate this email back to the case record that has been created and also make sure that it's being sent to the um, the uh, the primary contact of the case. OK, so let's go ahead into my model driven app and create a new case so that we can trigger this power automate.
Okay, so my case has been created. So let's go and check out the flow run history in Parrot Automate. So we can see that it has successfully sent. So I'll quickly show you what I meant by that 200 status response issue. So as you can see, it's only displaying the 200 status reason response rather than the full details. So by using the compose action, I can see all of the um, JSON response and its properties returned. And then we can also see that it has correctly grabbed the queue ID um, as a sender. So when we go back into the model driven app and we open up that case record, um, we can then open up the email activity and we can see that the sender is now showing as a queue rather than a user account. And that is it for today's WTF episode. I hope you found this useful. Make sure you stay tuned because in my next WTF episode, I'll be expanding on sending from a queue. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and welcome back if you are a regular comer here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next WTF episode. Bye! Let's go!